how can you manage the conversation between the users and, for example, the backend large launch model? The guardrail needs to take care of both inputs from the developers and also the, 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 the reply from large language models. It may have to schedule the conversation and it may redirect the conversation to a third party applications for, or knowledge base, for example, for fact check. Synthesia. Michael uh, is in charge of uh, ecosystem and uh, uh, strategic alliances for NVIDIA and Nemo, really important infrastructure in the space. Michael, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Brad, for having me. It's All a great right. opportunity for me to talk about what NVIDIA do, is doing in this uh, very, very interesting space. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to let you bring up your screen because I think you're going to show some things first. Go for it. Enterprises are turning to generative AI to revolutionize the way they innovate, optimize operations, and build a competitive advantage. To achieve this, they need a foundry to build generative AI models. NVIDIA Nemo Framework is an end-to-end -end cloud native framework for curating data, training and customizing foundation models, and running the models at scale while ensuring appropriate responses with guardrails. The framework also supports multimodality, including text-to-text, text-to-image, and text-to-3D models, and image-to-image -image generation. Let's take a closer look. Nemo simplifies data curation by extracting, deduplicating, and filtering information from a large corpus of unstructured data at scale. The Nemo framework takes advantage of distributed training. It uses various 3D parallelism techniques to efficiently utilize GPUs and memory across tens of thousands of nodes by splitting the model and the training data. This maximizes throughput and minimizes training time. But the real magic happens when you unleash Nemo's power for customization. Once you've trained your foundation models, you can use various techniques like P-tuning, adapters, and low-rank adaption of large language models to easily customize them for various tasks. You can add functional skills to focus on user domain and add guardrails to prevent inappropriate responses. And you can continuously improve the model with techniques like reinforcement learning from human feedback. For accelerated inference, Nemo uses NVIDIA Triton Inference Server to deliver state-of-the-art inference accuracy, latency, and throughput on single GPU, multi-GPU, and multi-node configurations. Triton offers standard HTTP or gRPC interface to connect with applications and can easily scale to handle large inference volumes. Also, the Nemo framework is part of NVIDIA AI Enterprise, an end-to-end -end cloud-native software platform designed to accelerate enterprises to the leading edge of AI with support, security, and API stability, giving you peace of mind with your AI projects. Okay, that's a short video about NVIDIA Nemo. As you know, the pipeline for building, customizing, deploying, and inferencing are pretty comprehensive. So Nemo framework is designed for our developers to do whatever they like. So especially for enterprises. So if you consider the pipeline, usually it includes a few steps from data curation to uh, pre-training to customization, inferencing, and even deployment with guardrails. So Nemo enables all the steps. And so depending on the use cases like pre-training, customization, or inferencing, Nemo provides the features that can be used for the developers especially for enterprise customers who would like to build, customize the models for their specific domains or with their domain-specific data. And Nemo is make them very easy to build a domain-specific large language model. Yeah, absolutely. And you can pull down the, the image now. I think people probably had, like, had a chance to sort of grok what's, what's there. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that. So you've got the pre-trained foundation models in the lower left there. Now, uh, NVIDIA has a number of 
uh, models that it announced earlier this year, which can be can easily be selected from. But I think you you support a number of open source and and even some proprietary models as well in the framework. Is that correct? That's correct. So at the very beginning, Nemo is built on top of NVIDIA foundation models. As you know, a few years ago, NVIDIA built a large language model, which had more than 500 billion parameters. And we have been building new models um, that using our own data set and is called the GPT series models. We have foundation models with different sizes from 5 billion to 20 billion or 43 billion and larger models. So besides of those series uh, GPT models NVIDIA built, NEMO also support uh, more community models. Examples like Llama, including Llama 1, Llama 2, with different sizes, and also MPT from Mosaic ML, Falcon, or Start Coder. The goal of NEMO is make sure we provide platforms and tools for developers to fine tune the most popular community models for commercial usage. Yeah, so a couple things to go on there. So I, I, the first question from Steve King from the audience, is there an orchestrator function in the Nemo architecture sing, similar to what we just saw with Bing where they have the Sydney orchestrator for the Bing application? Do you have an orchestration feature within the framework for Nemo for working with the large language models? For training or inferencing? I think I think the question is related to inference. Yeah, so we do. So Nemo actually is containerized. We have two containers, one for training and fine tuning, the other for inferencing. In the inferencing container, we have built in two major softwares from NVIDIA. One is Triton. So Triton is the uh, framework to host machine learning models with whatever engines are available, like TensorFlow, PyTorch, or Onyx Runtime, and TensorRT from NVIDIA. Um, so besides of Triton, we also integrated the so-called TensorRT LM, which is the premier inferencing engine re just released by NVIDIA last week. So TensorRT LM, I would say, is the best inference engine on the market at this time, because it increased two major parts of NVIDIA's Chrome technology in this space. One is TensorRT, that's a general inference engine that can optimize the neural network by, by features like a future, uh, kernel fusion and also memory re, uh, optimization. And the other part is, was, was from, actually we had one project called Foster Transformer, which was open source project. Now we productize that and in, with that, we have a set of very optimized kernels for large language, large language model inferencing. So com by combining both two, Tensor RTLM now supports those popular models on single GPU, multiple GPU, single node, or even models that need GPUs or cross nodes. So the, the inference engine, just a, a point of clarification, is, is that, uh, hardware independent or is it hardware dependent? We try to make it hardware independent, but as you know, the optimization should be associated with the major GPU architecture. From that point of view, it is hardware dependent. Depending on your, you, which GPU architecture you're using, A100 or H100, the optimization could be, there could be some difference. Got it. That's Got why it. there is an optimization process. Absolutely. The and, it, and there's a request uh, to, to bring the image back up for a moment from the, from the audience. So while okay. you do that, I'll ask you another question about that. Let me do that. So one of the other things you talked about was using the Nemo framework should help people, should make it easier for people to um, work with some of the open source models. You mentioned MPT, you mentioned Llama. Because today, if you're going to work with those models on your own, there's actually a significant amount of work to do in order yes. to, to set that up. And so this is designed to sort of streamline that process where you can basically just select a model, you can pull it in, and then you can start whatever you're going to do, the fine tuning or other processes, correct? Right. That's correct. So one example is like you can pull the 
models from Hagen phase report stream. We, we have a script for you to convert that model into the NEMO format. And then you, we have the tutorials. We have the recipe for you to pre-train the models if you like from scratch. And, but I think one amazing set of features is the customization part. As you know, there are very, very, very different kind of customization or uh, features for large language model. Actually, depending on the amount of data you have, depending on how much computing you would like to use, there is like a prompt engineering or there is a prompt tuning or p-tuning or fine tuning like uh, adapters, LoRa, and of course, they are also kind of a supervised fine tuning or even with reinforced learning from human feedback. So Nemo supported the spectrum of those fine tuning or customization approaches for your large language models. Right, and so, and how would this be different if someone wasn't using the Nemo framework? What would what would that look like if you're trying to do some of these different functions? Because basically, you have to assemble them all yourself independently. Correct. Right. Yeah. So we have kind. Of, so for the model, for each model could be different from architecture point of view or from some some space. We tested Nemo with those standard kind of. Uh, model architectures, make sure the models can be working out of box. And then we provide tutorials and notebooks to make these kind of uh, tasks easier. Got it. And, and about the data curation, what is the key benefit of that? And you know, tell me a little bit about the functionality there and how people would apply it. Yeah, actually this is very, very important. As you know, especially if you want to pre-train large language model, which many enterprise customers would like to do so. Um, data part is very comprehensive. So that's why we built the data curators. So there are a few things to be done, actually many things to be done. And the major features of data curator is that it can help you to download the data and help you to clean, extract the data, for example, from HTML file or from other format and help you to clean the data. You know, there are boilerplate data like in the HTML file that you don't need. And you may want to correct some bad Unicode. You want to remove the new line or you want to remove the repetition. And one more task is duplic removing duplication. You know, many documents, when you get those the documents from the internet, they could be the same or they could be very similar to each other. The one major task is how can you remove those du duplication from your data set? It could be, document level, or it could be task level. So um, that is a very, very compute, uh, compute intensive task. We did build that features and accelerate that even on GPUs. So all the way to the right on that image, um, you have the concept of guardrails. And I want to talk, to talk to you about that a little bit because I think there's a mis... I think people use the term differently and sometimes there's a misperception in what guardrails are. So a lot of people think of guardrails as just being safety oriented or, or maybe maybe they think about it safety and truth. The guardrail is some sort of supervisor which is saying, okay, these things would violate it. Don't print that to the screen or this thing is not correct. It's, it's not grounded properly. Um, but you think about guardrails as much broader in terms of their application. And I, I thought it would be great for you just to sort of share what the Nemo architecture thinks of in terms of the scope and boundaries of guardrails. Yeah. So if, if you think of what, how we can implement what you just shared, it, ha it has to be implemented as a process, which is how can you manage the conversation between the users and, for example, the backend large language model. The guardrail needs to take care of both inputs from the developers and also the, 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 the reply from large language models. It may have to schedule the conversation and it may redirect the conversation to a third party applications for, or knowledge base, for example, for fact check. So Nemo Garrel is an open source product. It can do any three things. One is to try to keep the conversation on the topic. And second is to um, make sure the conversation, the information is not biased, is not toxic, toxic, 
And third, it can even do some security level guarantee to make sure there's no leakage of the information. By do that, how to do that? So Nemo is actually has a programmable kind of a, a engine. So in other words, developers can use a programming language to define the a conversation flow. And we have a runtime to execute this kind of conversation flow or diagraph flow and to redirect, for example, the conversation to a third party. So in other words, there is a lot of scheduling and orchestration work to be done to provide different rails. Right, so the, the rails being evaluation of the input and that can be for security, it could be for context, it could be for other mm -hmm. things. There's and so we, yeah. we actually provide a set of predefined pre rails that could be very useful, like a topical rails. So developers can just use this rail and refine that by changing the configuration for their purpose. We also provide moderation role or execution role or jailbreak, jailbreak role and even grounding role, uh, rails. So those rails are ready to use. Yeah, that's great. And so, and, and a lot of people overlook the input evaluation or the input supervision being mm -hmm. almost as important as the output supervision. Everyone sort of thinks that that's where the activity is. Exactly. It's interesting. And then this idea that you have in the guardrails this ability to do orchestration either within the application or with third parties as well, I think is super interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, when you look at uh, large language models, and we'll just finish up on this question for you, where do you think in this pipeline that people are having the biggest challenge today? Where are they, um, and whether they're using Nemo or not using Nemo, where do you think they are, are probably overlooking one of the challenges that's gonna be really important taking to production and then in production? I would say one biggest challenge is inferencing. As you know, the scale is huge. If you consider inferencing, it happens every second. Not like a training or fine tuning, it may happen much less frequently, right? So now how to get the most out of the inferencing stack? How to get a low latency with high throughput? So that's, I would say that's one big challenge for, especially for enterprise customers, because that's about the cost, about the money and the performance. And Nemo provide this inferencing, I would say, again, best inference engine with all the popular features integrated. I think that would be a good fit for many users. That's and okay. yeah, and second is customization. So yeah. we talked to so many partners and customers. They found that the general large language models may not be good fit for their specific domains or specific use cases. Right. On the other hand, they have to accumulate so much data for their customer, their domain, their, their use cases, but how to leverage their data, get the value of the data so that they can provide the best large language model for their customers, their domain. And that's, I think that's a big challenge for enterprise customers. Um, so Nemo can enable enterprise customers to do that. Yeah. Good. Customization, obviously, super important. Uh, this has yeah. been great, uh, Michael. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to share a little bit more about Nemo. Where do you, where would you direct everybody to learn more? Yeah, so um, Nvidia has been very open. Like one example is like TensorTM is actually open source. It's a GitHub project. Everybody can do, go to the GitHub to uh, play with TensorTLM. So Nemo is containerized, is public available now. Developers can go to the NGC repository and download the containers and deploy that wherever you like to play with it, with those, for example, models from Hagen Face. And I would encourage everybody to play with it and feel free to let me know if you need any help, you have any questions there. And we, as the developer relation managers from NVIDIA, we are here to support our partners. Synthedia, the business and technology of generative AI. Generative AI, synthetic media, large language models, image generators, virtual humans, voice clones, deep fakes, chat GPT, and more. 